Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today, as I'm sure you know by the title, I am answering your questions and queries because I get a lot of DMs on Instagram asking for advice and my opinion and help on certain subjects, which is very random because I don't know what, why it started. People just started doing it. And since I get people asking me for advice on certain subjects, I decided why not make a video? Because I'm sure there's other people with the same kind of issue or same kind of question they have. So hopefully it'll either help the person who's asked it or more. So let's go. Disclaimer, I am no professional. I have never been trained. I've just got my own life experience that I can go off and what I can advise from. So number one is how come it's so hard to date? Like, haha, is essentially how come it's so hard to date? I think it's hard to find someone who matches you because I think people now have all these expectations and false ideologies that we've been made from like TV shows and reality shows and like from what people post on Instagram. And that's not reality of any relationship or any life. So then as soon as people start to date and it goes a bit wrong where it doesn't look like what you've seen on TV or Instagram or something, people are like, well, this isn't right because it doesn't look like that. So then they stop. So I think that's why it's quite hard to date these days because people have a lot of false expectations. But I don't think it's hard to date once you find the one. And I think that's very important. Which leads me on to the second question, which is, how do you deal being single, girls struggling? I'm 18 in a month and never dated. I don't think it matters at all like you are 18 and never dated but it's just not a problem whatsoever no matter what age you are whether you've dated or not dated in my opinion because like so what it's your life it doesn't matter if you are not dating at 18 or if you're not dating at 31 like as long as you're happy but you're also asking me how do you deal with being single which if you're dealing i'm guessing it's time to deal with it which you shouldn't have to deal with it's just something you shouldn't embrace that embrace this time you have with yourself like you yourself and you What's the opposite of me, myself, and I? You know, I think it's a good time to invest the time in yourself and work on yourself and, like, be the best person you can. So when you do find someone else, you two can both be the best versions of yourselves that you can be together. Use this time to get fit, work on mental health, work on self-love, work on anything you want. Just invest this time in yourself. That's how you deal with being single. You own it. The next one is telling your family that you are gay. So my opinion for this one is just do it. You just have to do it because for me and like the people I know who have told their family with a gay by pan anything, there's never going to be a day where you're like, ah, oh, you know what, today I don't, it doesn't bother me, I'm trying to tell them. You just have to kind of bite the bullet and get on with it and just go through that awkward, scary moment to then come out on the other side with the happiness and the positives because it does seem so scary. I know that, I've done it. Your family are your family, like your family are meant to, meant to love you unconditionally and meant to not really think twice about anything other than you are their son, you are their daughter, you are whatever you identify as, that is what you are to them. It shouldn't matter to your family at all who you are. You should only have people in your life who are good for you and who have love for you and just wish the best for you. Anyone who brings negativity or doesn't accept you for 100% who you are, they're not worthy of being in your life. Like, this is your life, be proud of who you are and own who you are. Whether it's on a phone call, text, email, in person, a letter, anything you just have to do it and you will feel a hundred times better whether it goes how you wanted it to or a little bumpy you will feel better after it in the long run because you're being true to yourself and that's the best thing you can be but please let me know how that goes so the next one is how do i become a vegan well, how do you become a vegan you do your research you stop eating meat and you stop eating dairy you buy vegan food you cook it and you eat it honestly it is just that easy people think it's really hard being a vegan and it's really not i think vegan food has tasted so much nicer than when i used to eat animal food so vitamins nutrients minerals you need to know what you'll be lacking or where you need to replace things and things like that just so you stay healthy i think you need to find a reason why you're doing it to hold on to that because it's like when you especially when you first start it's become quite tempting to be like, oh, i can't bother i'm going to go and have mcdonald's chicken nuggets it's important to find your reason why you want to do it so you can hold on to it and it's kind of like motivation for you because then once you get through the first like three months of it you kind of just whip it and yeah next can you give me advice about not caring what people think i can try i would say you need to realize that this is your life you only have one of them so live it for you no one else make you happy as long as it's not harming anyone else who cares another thing is people are always going to have an opinion whether they're in your life now or not as long as you're happy and doing what you want to do in your life, who cares? Like, and if they care, then they need to focus on themselves more. But that's what I think. I think people who are judging you and looking what you're doing in your life and just being negative towards you, they're not focusing on their lives. So you're ahead of them anyway. So why care what they're going to think? Because there's a quote and it's something like, 
is so people who are doing the least with themselves and their lives always have the most to say about what others are doing in their lives. You just need to zone in on you, on your life, and what makes you happy and what you want to do or say or wear or be. It is just your life and live it to how you want. And if people have an opinion, so what? That is my take on not caring what people think. So the next question, it just says leaked nudes. What if my nudes leak? Oh, I'm going to assume it has. I think if your nudes have leaked, they're out there. People have seen them. Own it. They're, yes, that is my body. Yes, that's how I look. And I look good. Because I also think if you're going to take a nude and send it to someone, I imagine you must have liked how you looked in that picture to take it and then maybe send it to someone. Like if you're at school, tell the teachers. But trust me, they will help you. Um, but your nudes leaking, I think you have to own it. Because I think at this point, that out there, people are going to see it. You have to own it. You're just going to be like, yeah, that is my body. Yes, I look that good. What can you do now? But I do also say not taking nudes at all, ever. Like, I just would not recommend doing that because, like this question says, they can leak. And if you don't want them to leak, don't even risk it by taking one. So the next one is, can you explain meditation and law of attraction? I will briefly do it now, but I think I am going to do a video on it later on because I've had a lot of DMs about why I meditate and how you meditate and things like that. So I'm also going to intertwine law of attraction to that. So I am going to do a video on that, but quickly, can you explain meditating and law of attraction? I just do what I do and I know what I know. So what I know is, so there's a lot of different types of meditation, but the general gist of it is, that I'm aware of, is putting your body and your mind kind of like in such a relaxed state that for me, I perceive it as my spiritual body and spiritual mind awakening, which then can go to different frequencies and create things and manifest things and calm things or there's so many different types of meditation to do but for me it puts you in control of your body it checks in with your body and your mind it's just very relaxing and it's very very powerful and law of attraction is essentially when you put energy into something and it comes true that is kind of the gist of it but i will do a video explaining it more and kind of a beginner's guide I'm thinking of doing. So let me know if you want that. I also think meditation and anything on the spiritual side of life is a personal journey and a personal experience. Because if you're not into the spiritual side of your body or your mind or your life, please just, I recommend you get into it so much. Next one is how do I keep my anxiety settled during lockdown? I think personally, because I know what anxiety is like, I know it can creep up, I know it can affect a lot. But during lockdown, especially when I feel there's a lot of anxiety everywhere, I think it's good to just, like I said in my morning routine, check in with what you're grateful for. Like, remind yourself and your mind how good your life is and what good you have in your life. Like, even if it's just like going through five things, I tend to go through like 10 things I'm appreciative for and grateful for. But anything, just to remind yourself, you have these good positive things in your life, so don't forget that. I also think keep your mind and body very busy. So whether it's exercise in the house, whether it's talking, whether it's crafting, whether it's baking, singing, making a video, TikTok. Like I think just keeping your mind busy is perfect. I wouldn't recommend sitting in bed all day with the blinds, curtains closed, watching TV. I don't think that is good for anyone's mental health. I mean, it might be for you. That is great. I'm glad it is. Personally, sitting in bed, watching TV all day is awful for my mental health and that's just how it is. I am someone who likes to be active and I like to be cosy, don't get me wrong, I can be cosy and I can be wrapped in blankets and I can be sipping tea all day long, but I will never just sit in bed with in the dark watching TV because it fries my brain. I know if I just sat in bed and done nothing during lockdown because now I'm not in work or anything, I would have gone insane. My mental health would have deteriorated, my physical health would have deteriorated, I would just be not a happy person right now. I would I have used this time productively, actively, and in a way where I can better all aspects of life. And I think that's what you need to do. The final one that I'm gonna answer is, I'm worried I'm being cheated on. There's a lot of different opinions about being cheated on, how to act and what to do. You asked me, so I will, um, I'll answer how I can. I hope it's okay. First of all, I would ask myself, am I being rational and why do I think this? Just, you know, because sometimes, your brain, especially when you're locked in a house, can run away with you. But if there's messages or he's being shady, ask him. In relationship to be open and trust each other. So ask him. If he denies it and you're still not convinced he's telling you the truth, 
be like, look, we need to clearly have a chat because I'm feeling this way. Maybe he isn't giving you the love you need or maybe you're overthinking it. Maybe you're being a bit jealous or maybe he is he's being unfaithful and you just have that instinct. You need to ask him, one, to see how he reacts. If you've been together a while, I think you will know by looking at his face. Things that have been cheated on for me, I used to always say, end it, end it, end it. If it cheat, end. And then Beyonce came out of Lemonade. I know this probably sounds stupid to a lot of people, but if you've not listened to that album and what Beyonce went through and stuff with Jay-Z and stuff, how she have came in and look at them now from what we see it look like. I think couples that want to and are strong enough can work through it. But I also think there comes a point when you need to draw a line. Let's go with if they are cheating on you, you talk about it, you find out why, you, you, you say what you need to say, you do what you need to do. And then we come back and we're like, right, is this love strong enough to move forward or is it a day now? Do we move on? If you can get over it, you just need to end it because it is looking at worse and worse a relationship if you cannot move on from something. If you can get over it, great. You can both work together openly, honestly, and move forward. And it depends how severe the cheating is and stuff, but people do make mistakes. Things with cheating, I think everyone is going to have a different opinion. And there's not a right one. There is not a right thing to say to advise someone on them being cheated on because no one else is in a relationship and so no one else knows how strong you are or what's gone on or anything. So my advice is, Listen to your gut and listen to your instinct. Whatever the outcome is, though, whether you stay with them or move on from them, that is down to you. And no one else's opinion matters in this situation but yours. But try and be calm and find an outcome where you're either moving forward together, stronger and better. Because if you can't move forward in a relationship stronger than you were before, there's no elevation in a relationship. If you decide to move forward separately, then that's okay. And you are strong and you are independent and you will find someone he will treat you how you deserve. So I hope any of those responses were helpful. Again, I am not a professional, as I'm sure you could tell, but I have a life. I have 20 years of life experience, which isn't that much, I know. It's not like a wise old man, but it's more than a, it's more than a 10 year old. But I hope you enjoyed. Thank you everyone who did send in questions and advice. There was more, and I will save them for a part two. I hope this little video helped at least one person watching. That is today's video. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel. That would mean a lot. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on Sunday with another video. That is my opinion.